I am good here from the drag con in this little 3D moment. Yeah. Is this, can, can, wait, can the camera see all this? So like in the picture, out the picture. Yes. In the picture, out the picture. So, so fun. I love this idea. Thank you. So I have a super fun ang anecdote for you. I cannot say that word. Uh. I met you at a drag queen Christmas and um, you Was cracked- funny? Yeah. You literally cracked one joke, just one. Like it was at the beginning of the show. You cracked oh, a lot. I had, I had won the whole show. No, no, you cracked a lot. But oh, after, okay, okay. after the, your first joke, I turned to him and I'm like, "Oh, so is Monet a comedy queen?" <laughs> I mean, I don't like to categorize myself as one thing yeah. ever. You know, I mean, I, I, I like to think I, that I do a whole bunch of things well. Yeah, no, you totally do. He just thought it was so funny because it was literally one joke and I was like, oh, does she consider herself a comedy queen? So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, had to tell you that. Um, so how's your drag con, Ben? It's almost over. I know, this is, this is the last day. Drag con's been a whole lot of fun. I, I, I always think drag con's fun. I'm not one of those girls who's like, ugh, drag con. It feels like a lot of work, but I literally just show up because Patty does like literally 90% of it. I literally just show up and then um, I'm like, oh, this is exhausting. <laughs> Meanwhile, he literally did everything. Aww, yeah, he's the best. He's so he adorable he too. I'm like obsessed with you. <laughs> um, and so I think what's fascinating about drag con or drag in general, it's very mainstream now. We're immersed in uh, pop culture. Um, with that, there comes a new responsibility because you have kids coming up to your booth. But drag queens um, traditionally are known for being more risque, maybe cracking a lot of like sexual jokes, having that humor. How do you find the balance between being a typical drag queen, like how, like with all your amazing jokes, drag queen Christmas, with also catering to this younger crowd? You know, I, and and. It's, it, uh, in instances and situations like like a dragon Christmas, I don't feel the need to censor myself because a it does say that the event is for a mature audience, and oh, if you decide true. to bring a younger uh, human being, then you have to realize what you're doing. Yeah, but funny. also, I don't feel like we should censor kids from sex mm -hmm. and make them feel like sex is this weird thing that they can't I talk about. I think that that's part of the problem. So yeah, you can make so obviously you're not gonna say to a, a seven year old suck a dick you fucking asshole but you can still talk about a penis or talk about boobs whatever you want you know what i mean yeah, exactly. but just do it in a very conscious way that you're not being too offensive and 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 and, and, and that you're still being conscious that this person is younger yeah. but not shying away from sex completely because i i was not shy away from, from from sex as a kid my mom was very sex positive and very open with me and it made me into a more informed and a more responsible adult so oh, i love hearing that that's so so important yeah. and um going off of that do you think that drag queens who have a platform like you um you know from being on season 10 and winning congrats by the way um have an obligation or responsibility to be like a spokesperson to the younger crowd or is that like too much pressure um no i think that when it comes to being advocates and those types of things I think that we have to realize not everyone needs to be a spokesperson or an advocate for their community. If you want to be, that's great. But just because someone is trans doesn't mean that they are that they are a trans activist, exactly. and you know, and, and vice versa. So if if you want to be, then great, you do that and you speak on the issues how you want to. But if you don't want to be, that's cool too. Not everyone has to be an advocate or an activist for their group or their community. Because mm -hmm. like not every black person has to speak for black people. You know what I mean? Yep. It's just like if you want to, then great. But if you yeah. don't, that's great too. Yeah, I totally agree. And there, it's a new like there, there's a word for it it's called tokenism when you yeah. appoint one person to do that exactly. and that's way too much pressure and it's also I agree it's not obligated yeah. if you want to and you feel like that's your calling great but again we expect so much out of all of y'all already yeah. with the sparkles so yeah, exactly. <laughs> this beautiful eyeshadow that I'm wearing by lit cosmetics oh it is gorgeous I'm obsessed with sparkles clearly so <laughs> well thank you so much you I'm really glad we got dear. to do this yeah. um do you want to do the easiest part of the interview and plug your social media yeah please follow me on social media um no I'm not Bob the drag queen if you thought that <laughs> might be a little racist um I'm on exchange I'm on exchange on all social media platforms and um look at look out for my new talk show on buildseries.com yes. yeah. yay thank you so much you, I really dear. appreciate thank it thank you honey Mwah. thanks bye guys bye